And guys, we have just passed June. It is now July 2022, which means we are over halfway through the year, I guess, at this point. Halfway through the year, over halfway through the year. So I thought it'd be fun if we looked at the upcoming months with the movies that are coming up in them and talk about our most anticipated ones that we got coming up for the rest of the year. So uh, how this is going to work is I'm going to go through each month. I've picked up a, a runner up or two for movies that I'm excited to see. And then we'll talk about my most anticipated movie of that month. So kicking it off right with June this month, my runner up for June is actually Nope. Uh, Jordan Peele's new movie, Nope. Uh, I am really looking forward to seeing what Jordan Peele is going to do with this movie. I, as you guys probably know, and as I've told you, I'm not a big horror guy. I don't mind horror, but it's not my like niche. It's not my forte, so to speak. But Jordan Peele, I really enjoyed Get Out. I really enjoyed Us, even though the ending of Us got a little bit weird. I still thought that it was a very enjoyable movie. And the trailers for Nope have actually really intrigued me because it does have that kind of eerie creepiness vibe to it but a lot of the dialogue in there has really worked for me i think there's some humorous moments in the trailers that have worked for me it looks like a kind of signs alien invasion kind of movie and uh i'm really digging the trailers i'm looking forward to seeing what jordan peele has to deliver and he's kind of become like the new m night Shyamalan, where you're like there's a twist right there's gonna be a twist and i'm looking forward to seeing what that twist is but for july guys my pick coming up Actually, tomorrow for me, the the most anticipated, not nah, my most anticipated movie for July, is Thor: Love and Thunder. I am really, really excited to see what Taika Waititi, Chris Hemsworth, Natalie Portman, all those guys over at Marvel have been cooking up with Thor: Love and Thunder. Huge fan of Thor: Ragnarok. I think this one looks like it very well could top Thor: Ragnarok. If you ask me, I think it looks like it has more drama, has more heart. The uh, reactions coming out of the premiere and out of the press screenings have been, for the most part, pretty positive. There's been some people who have said that it's a little too goofy, and I'm definitely going in with that mindset of this is a comedy. I just want it to make me laugh. And I love the way that Thor and Taika Waititi made me laugh in Ragnarok, so I'm really looking forward to seeing what they got for me in Thor Love and Thunder. Moving on to August. My runner-up for August is Bullet Train. I think Bullet Train looks amazing i mean i've seen the trailers in theaters like every single movie i've gone to this year has played that trailer and each time they play it i just want to see this on the big screen even more i think it looks like it has a lot of energy to it it looks like a really fun action comedy movie my only concern with bullet train sometimes the trailer looks really good for a new movie that you know nothing about and then you go to watch it and it's not very good. I hope that's not the case with Bullet Train. But I am giving myself just a little bit of hesitation with Bullet Train. Just in case that ends up being the case. But the trailers so far have looked really awesome. But for my pick in August, my most anticipated movie for August is Prey. Yeah, I really like Predator. I don't like the whole franchise, so to speak. I mostly just like that first film with Arnold Schwarzenegger. And that last movie, The Predator, that came out in like 2018, whew, was that ever brutal. And I was really looking forward to that. It was Shane Black. It, uh, it looked like it had so much potential, and they just crapped the bed with it. But this has a really interesting setting to me. You're going back like to 18, what is it, 1800 BC or something like that. You've got people that don't have the technology that the Predator have. And that trailer that they released recently... Oh my goodness, I'm so excited to see what they can do. I think it's going to bring back that kind of vibe that I like about Predator. What I like about Predator is like the big muscly man with all the machine guns that look like they could just kill anybody, anywhere, anytime, or being hunted down and scared out of their minds by this creature from space. I think it's brilliant. We're, we're not going to get that exact thing in Prey, but to see these hunters who are like top of the food chain during this time, all of a sudden be threatened by something so much greater than them, I think it could be a really great time. It's going streaming directly to Hulu, which for me will just be Disney Plus Star in Canada. But uh, that doesn't uh, take away my, my excitement for it. I think it still has the potential to be a really, really fun Predator movie and hopefully a return to form. All right, so when it comes to September, I looked at the movies in September. A lot of them are like limited releases, not very wide releases. There's not really much that I found that I'm excited for to watch in September. But I did remember that Netflix has Cobra Kai Season 5 coming in September. So that is my most anticipated thing coming out in September. I'm a huge Cobra Kai fan. I remember watching the first episode of Cobra Kai when it was on YouTube Red. I think it was on YouTube Red. And it was like it was like free because it had just come out and they were trying to promote it. And I thought, 
this is kind of cringy. I don't really know if, if these actors from the 80s have worked since the 80s. Uh, but man, when the show kept going on by the second episode, I was hooked. Even though I found some cringe with the acting at first, they really grew into the show. The show's premise was strong enough for me to stick with it. Watch these actors grow into these performers. The kids are fantastic. I came for Daniel. I came for Johnny. And now I'm here for Miguel. I'm here for Samantha. I'm here for Robbie. I'm so invested in these characters. I'm really looking forward to seeing what they've got for us in season five. And for that reason, that's why Cobra Kai is in September. And like September, October doesn't have too much that I found that I was looking forward to. Of course, it's the Halloween season, so there's a lot of horror stuff coming out in October. So there wasn't really anything that stuck out to me except for Black Adam. So Black Adam is my October pick for my most anticipated movie that month. And I'll be honest, it's a weak pick. I'm not that excited about Black Adam. I thought the trailer that they released looked interesting. It looked like it could be fun, but it also looked like it could be goofy and totally uneven really fast. But man, The Rock is such a hype man. Have you been on his Instagram lately? He is hyping up the Black Adam movie is like the the second coming <laughs> for movies. Like he is really getting me kind of hyped up to see what this character is going to do. Although if I have to hear someone say that the hierarchy of the DC universe is about to change one more time, I'm going to lose my mind. <laughs> they overuse that phrase, especially The Rock overuses that so much. Things will never be the same because the hierarchy of power in the DC universe is about to change. All right, so bringing us into November, my runner up for November, and this might be a little bit shocking because you guys know that I'm the Marvel, I'm a Marvel guy over here, is Black Panther Wakanda Forever. This is my runner up for November because of the unfortunate fact that we have lost Chadwick Boseman. And Chadwick Boseman as T'Challa, you know, he was the main character of Black Panther. He was the one that we were following. He is, he was the, you know, the character of Black Panther. And now they don't have that character anymore, unfortunately. And they decided not to recast Chadwick Boseman, which, you know what, that's their decision. I'm not, I'm not going to, that's a conversation for another time. But because we don't have T'Challa now in Black Panther Wakanda forever, they have a really strong uphill battle to fight against because they got to introduce us to a new character. They got to get us to care about this new Black Panther. They got to explain T'Challa's absence in Black Panther. They got to make that work for the movie. I mean, I'm pretty sure once T'Challa or uh, Chadwick Boseman unfortunately passed away, they had to go back and rewrite the story, rewrite the script. Marvel is such a, a well-organized mechanic machine that they have stuff in place for years in advance. And I'm pretty sure a death of a character like T'Challa is a pretty big wrench to throw into the storyline of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So I have a little bit of worry that they're not going to be able to pull it off, but I'm really hoping that they do. But for that reason, my hesitation has Wakanda Forever as my runner-up for November. My pick, my most anticipated movie coming out in November is actually, once again, a Netflix film, technically. And that's The Glass Onion, A Knives Out Mystery. When the Knives Out movie came out back in 2019, I remember going into that movie. The only movie I'd seen from Ryan Johnson um, was The Last Jedi at that point. So I went into to Knives Out just to give this guy like, okay, this isn't Star Wars. Let's see what he's got. And what he's got to offer for Knives Out was awesome. It was like a throwback kind of like uh, mystery story, but it was modernized. And then it became like this, it turned from this whodunit to like this uh, try to to not get caught kind of movie like on the run like i just thought the the twists and turns in the movie were brilliant i thought all the actors all the the dynamic of the characters was great it was funny it was thrilling i had a great time with knives out and the fact that they're turning it now into like an anthology series where we're going to follow um uh, daniel craig's character uh, into all these other different mysteries i'm there man i'm i'm ready to see what else this guy's got to solve and um, I might go out to a theater to see this instead of just waiting for it to drop on Netflix. So for that reason, my November pick is The Glass Onion, a Knives Out mystery. All right, coming into December, we actually have two runner-ups for December this time around. So my first runner-up for December is Babylon. I know nothing about what Babylon's going to be except for the fact that it has a phenomenal cast. And the director of La La Land and Whiplash is directing this movie. Two movies that I absolutely love. I'm really looking forward to seeing what he's got for this cast. I'm sure it's going to involve some really awesome music. I'm sure it's going to have a great story. I'm just 
I, I think this is probably looking to be an Oscar contender kind of movie, and I hope that it can be that good. My second runner-up for December is Shazam 2. Shazam 2, I really enjoy the first Shazam. I think it's a little un, like tonally uneven with the villain. I think he's just a little bit too dark for that kind of movie. But Shazam 2, I'm really looking forward to seeing these guys come back. I love Zachary Levi in the role. My only hesitation with Shazam 2 a little bit is that DC moved all of their movies into 2023, except for Shazam 2. Shazam 2 was supposed to come out in 2023 in the summer, and they put it on the chopping block with Avatar coming out in December this time. So I don't know. That doesn't give me the most faith in the movie that it is going to be good. I hope it's good. It can still be good. You can't, I mean, we had a year of Bumblebee, uh, Aquaman, and one other movie I can't remember, but there was a, a last December or 2019's December was a packed December, and those movies turned out pretty good. So this movie can still be good next to Avatar, but I don't know. I don't know, man. I hope so. I really do. But my speaking of which, my number one pick for December is Avatar 2 The Way of Water. Now, if you saw my Avatar review that I posted on the channel after watching Avatar for the first time and again in like years, I'm not the biggest fan of Avatar. I think that the visual visual style and the technology of it definitely overshadows the story and the characters. I hope that I can get really invested in Avatar The Way of Water more so than the first Avatar. But this is James Cameron. He's been working on this movie for like 10 years. All these movies, all five of these movies coming up, he's been working on for like decades. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what he does. You don't doubt James Cameron. You know, he brought us T2. He brought us Titanic. He brought us Avatar. I really want to see what he does, how he pushes the envelope with Avatar The Way of Water. And hopefully... He makes the story just a little bit better. All right, guys. Those are all my anticipated movies for the months coming up for the rest of 2022. What are your guys' comment down below? Let me know. I want to hear all of them. And without further ado, let's check out what you guys are saying.